Hey guys, make sure this is working. Uh, Dr. Andre Pine said here, the pure productivity expert, and today I wanted to talk to you about confidence and what it means to be too cocky. And you guys can hear this going off overhead. I'm at work right now at the hospital, but quickly, I want to tell you guys a couple stories about why confidence is important. And something particularly happened this morning with a kid who almost died that really highlights the importance of confidence. So I want to tell you guys a couple stories, but I want to set this all up by why I'm doing this video. And it starts with the fact that I keep getting emails from people talking about how they are so not confident in themselves, that they're so anxious about things. And then I get the other set of emails that says that I'm too cocky, right, too arrogant. And particularly last night I got an email from a woman who told me that um, I was too cocky to be a doctor. She said that she had watched one of my videos on mental frameworks on YouTube and really liked the video, but that she wouldn't watch any more of my videos because I was too cocky. And doctors shouldn't be cocky, they should be humble. And she said I was setting a bad example for students by being so cocky and arrogant. And I get lots of emails like that, so I just ignored it. And then I got another email that was actually a really great email from a student who's doing research right now at the NIH. And he said that, uh, he sent me this long email about how wonderful my videos are and how much he likes them and how much they helped him. And he says how he listens to my uh, videos on YouTube with his headphones and he listens to my videos while he's in the lab all day. I'm doing research uh, to kind of get fired up and get through the day and you know get good advice. And he ended his email by saying how my advice is always on point and is so much better than what else is out there, but that I'm a bit too cocky. And so because his email was so insightful, uh, but he ended it with that, I just wanted to correct him because I saw so much promise in his email that I didn't want him to go through life thinking that you could be too cocky. And so we had this nice exchange and at the end I ended up giving him access uh, to one of my courses for like practically free so he can continue his learning and his education. Um, but what I wanted to say to you guys and what I said to him is that cocky and confident are two totally different things. Cocky is the person who's full of hot air, right? They talk a good game, they're all this, they're amazing, they're boastful, and they have nothing to back it up. I, on the other hand, are confident, and I want all of you guys to be confident. And the difference between cocky and confident, right? I mentioned hot, full of hot air. The opposite of that is when you just state facts. Right? And those facts are predicated, right? I confident, I believe in myself, and I can say that I believe in myself and that I'm amazing because I've established a track record of success. I've had success, and so I can say, listen, I've had success, I've done these things, and that's what's up, right? And to get that success, you have to work at it and put in time, right? So it's hard work, right? And executing a plan meticulously over and over again, consistently over a long period of time that gives you that success to feel good about yourself and to feel confident. And so I want to tell a couple stories today about why being confident is important to success and why if you're not confident, you're not gonna have success. And the first story is, and many of you guys may have heard my story, but going back to undergrad, my freshman year, I wasn't doing so great, right? And it wasn't because of any ability issues, I was just not really focusing, my skills weren't on point, I wasn't up to par. And my freshman counselor told me that I didn't have what it took to become a doctor and get to medical school and I'd never be a doctor. And she handed me some Afro-American studies or whatever, change of major stuff and said, uh, Idris, thank you, what's up, what's up, what's up? Um, she had me some change of major stuff and told me to change my major and do something that I had more skill to do. And I don't know why she would think that I had more skill and aptitude to go into African American studies or whatever it's called versus going into medicine and bio, but I don't know. <laughs> but she tells me this and this is the very first part of where you know confidence is important. Because so many of you guys, and you guys, I'm again, I'm in the hospital, so they're paging overhead, but so many of you guys get knocked off the pre-med track, get knocked off whatever track it might be in your life, right? You stop pursuing what you really dreamed of doing because people tell you that you can't do it, that you don't have what it takes, right? They label you, right? You can think back to third grade, right? You're just like, oh, you know what? You don't, you don't belong in the gifted class. You're a little slow. You gotta be over here. And so that shades you for your whole life, right? It starts shaking your confidence. And so when I hear people tell me that I'm too cocky to be a doctor, I would re re rebuttal to that, that if I wasn't as confident as I am in myself, I would have never become a doctor because I would have listened to that lady and I would have switched majors and not been in medicine. So what's the value of confidence? It gets you to become a doctor. And continuing that journey, I'm gonna tell you one more story about my path to medicine. And this is my fourth year of medical school. I'm working in the ICU and I get assigned a patient. He's like a 60 something year old white guy and he's in for severe heart failure after a heart attack. And so very, very sick, very, very tenuous situation. So I go into the room and I meet with the patient. I say, hello, I'm uh, Andre Pine said, I'm your student doctor. I'll be taking care of you as part of your team. And he looks at me and he's like, wait, you're gonna be my doctor? And I said, no, no, I'm not your doctor. I'm the medical student as part of your team working with your doctor and the nurses and the rest of the staff take care of you. 
He then says to me, well, um, I'm going to need uh, someone else on my team. And I said, yes, there are other people on your team. There's doctors and nurses and there's also me. He's like, no, no, no. I mean, I don't want you on my team. Nothing, nothing personal, but I don't want you on my team. And so I was like, well, that's weird. Um, but again, right, sick, fragile person. I'm not going to argue with him. Uh, so I said, okay, you know what? You want to take control or you want to control of your care? Totally fine. I left the room. I got another medical student to switch with me and take care of the guy. So a couple hours later, I ran into that medical student. I said, hey, listen, did that guy give you a hard time about being a medical student on his team? And uh, the medical student said, no, he actually didn't, didn't uh, care at all. And I said, well, did he say anything about me? And he's like, no. And you know, you can tell when someone's holding something back. And I said, well, no, no, tell me what he said. And he goes, no, I don't want to, the language kind of rough. I'm like, no, tell me what he said. Like, what, what did he say about me? And he said, well, he didn't want a nigger doc on his team. And I said, oh, okay, he didn't want uh, a black person on his team, I got you. And so I sat on that for a couple hours and I thought about it. And then after my shift, I got off, I went back in that guy's room and I said, hey, listen, you know, um, I'm not gonna get you in trouble. I don't want any, um, you know, any trouble. I just wanted to you know, know from my own um, reasoning what's going on. And uh, so I asked the guy and I said, you know, I heard you didn't want a black person on your team. So I was wondering, you know, why you didn't want a black person on your team. And so he then uh, was like, no, I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. And I said, yes, she did say it because they wouldn't come and tell me that unless she said it. So I just want to figure out why you wouldn't want a black person on your team. And he goes, you know, I just, uh, 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 and he keeps being hesitant. So I keep pushing him. And then finally he says, well, black people are untrustworthy. I just, I just don't trust black people. And I said, well, that's a big blanket statement. Like, why don't you trust black people? What do you mean? And he goes, I just don't trust black people. And so I keep pushing him. And then eventually he says that black people are thieves and black people steal. So I don't want a black person on my team. And so I said, well, again, that's a pretty broad statement to say that all black people are thieves and steal. I mean, that'd be like if I said all white people, right, are thieves and steal or all white people are upstanding citizens. It's just, it's too big and broad of a blanket statement. And so he looks at me and I said, well, where does that come from? And he said, well, I had a friend who was mugged by a black person back in, you know, way back in the day. <laughs> and so since then I've avoided black people. And so I asked him, well, I'm like, well, how many black people do you know? And the guy had said he only had a couple sentences with black people ever in his entire life since he was young because of this experience his friend had by getting mugged by a black guy. And so we went and we talked and we kind of rationed through it. And we talked for like two hours after my shift. And by the end of the two hours, we were laughing and talking about normal stuff, talking about sports and how he had moved out to California and it was so different from the South where he was from and, and all this stuff. And... I tell this story because, right, if I didn't have the confidence in myself that I would be a good doctor and that I had something to offer, then experiences like that, and this is one of a billion, guys, would have stopped me from becoming a doctor, right? It would have stopped me from doing all the things I'm doing now, right? When people said, oh, what are you doing, right? You're going to be a doctor. Why are you spending time teaching students how to do, how to study, how to get better? Like, that's not what doctors do, right? If I listen to those people, then I'm not impacting you guys. I'm not impacting students. I'm not doing the things that I enjoy doing. And so the whole message in all this, guys, is that if you want to be successful, if you want to be something, if you want to do something, you have to have supreme confidence in yourself. It's like Cat Williams says, right? You have to be in, in tune with your star player. It's so accurate because people are going to hate on you. People are going to say terrible things about you and they're going to shake your confidence. And if you don't have the confidence, right, to get through it and push through it and keep pursuing what you want to do, you'll never have success. And I see with so many of you students who email me, right? So I mentioned I get the emails saying I'm too cocky, but the other set of emails is how can you be so confident? I don't feel confident. I feel anxious. I'm uncertain. I don't know if I'm meant to be a doctor. I don't know if I can get there. All these things. And that's truly how people feel. That's how you guys feel. Because people, since you were young, have tried to label you and tell you what you can and can't do. And so what I'm trying to stress with you guys is that you can do anything you ever want to do, but it starts with confidence and believing you can do it. And if you want to be a doctor, there's no such thing as being too cocky as a doctor, right? We deal with life and death, real things. And so I want to close with this final story. I said two stories, now I'm getting three. This morning, what about confidence? I'm on preoperative clinic. I was told to come to clinic, be at clinic at 7 a.m. It's outpatient. This is preparing people for surgery. So making sure everything's in place, their heart's all right, all that stuff. So I show up at clinic at 7 a.m. I'm getting oriented, and then I get a call from another page overhead. I get another call from another attending saying, hey, where are you at? And he's yelling. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? I'm here in pre-op clinic where I'm supposed to be. And he goes, no, you're supposed to be here with me in the hospital. We have a case. It starts in a couple minutes. Where are you at? I said, 
no, I'm in pre-op clinic. And so he gets more upset because now I'm, right, I'm blocking what he said that I was supposed to be doing. And so he's like, no, you need to get in your car and get your A over here right now. So I was like, oh, okay. So then I tell the clinic person, hey, listen, I have to run over to the hospital. I have a case. I have to do this procedure. So now she's mad at me because she's thinking I'm choosing to go to the hospital over doing what I'm supposed to do in the clinic. So I'm like, oh gosh, now she's mad at me, he's mad at me, everybody's mad at me. So I get in my car, go up to the hospital. I show up like five minutes before this case. I don't know what the case is. I haven't looked it up. I know nothing about it. Turns out I walk in the room to, to see the waiting room to see this kid and there's no bed in the room. It's the first thing I see, there's no bed coming around. So I come around the curtain and there's a mom standing there holding her young child who happens to be three years old. It's a three-year-old child with leukemia and he's gonna be getting radiation therapy, so we have to put the kid to sleep. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, because I'm young in my anesthesia career, so I have done maybe two pediatric cases so far, <laughs> and now I'm doing a pediatric case that I have not prepared for, I have not looked up anything, I don't know anything about the kid, and I've gotta do it. And so, right, confidence kicks in. I say, okay, you know what, it's gonna be all right, I can do this, remember your training, do the thing. So. I wheel the kid back, we take him back, mom's holding him, we put him to sleep, kid goes to sleep. I'm in the room watching this kid doing the anesthesia and they're doing the radiation and they're getting ready to start and the kid goes apneic so he's not breathing and he starts to desaturate. And with kids, they have very little reserve volume in their lungs and so when they start to desat, it gets very scary very quickly because they can die, they can get brain damage, all these things. So that starts to happen, the nurses are screaming, right? The techs are screaming, hey, he's desatting, do something, desatting, desatting, desatting. And they're yelling, right? And it's pretty frantic. As you can imagine, a young kid, he's desatting, he could die, right? Oxygen level's dropping. And instead of getting frantic with everyone else and getting shaky and having anxiety, I take a second, calm myself, tap into that confidence. And I say, wait, you know what to do. What do you have to do? Desatting. What could be the reasons? I run through my algorithm. And the first thing I say is, well, this is a kid. I just put him unconscious. He's not breathing. It's probably because he's apneic because he's obstructing. So I look, he is actually obstructing. So I do a jaw thrust. So essentially I pick his chin up right, to pull his tongue out of the way, and then all of a sudden, he's breathing again, his saturation goes up, and he's fine. Now, kid didn't die, everything was fine, crisis averted, not really that scary for an anesthesia, but the point is, is if you are not confident, if you don't have the ability to see through all the clutter and all the anxiousness and everything that everyone else is feeling, all the nervousness, if you can't be poised, you can't perform and you can't deliver and you, people will die as a doctor. So can a doctor ever be too cocky? I don't think so, because you have to be confident enough to when stuff hits the fan, you can rely on your skills and have confidence to do what is required to save a life. And that's what I want for you guys. When you guys say you have test anxiety, the reason you have test anxiety is because you don't have confidence because you have not developed a track record of success of doing well on tests. Why haven't you done well on tests? Well, probably because you're not preparing properly and you're studying. Right? So if you develop good study habits, you have the right study skills, and you do well, then you perform on tests, all of a sudden you have this track record of success on tests, and then you don't have test anxiety. But until you get to that point, right, you gotta eventually, you gotta start with confidence and believing that you can actually deliver and perform in the classroom before you're actually ever gonna do that. And so so many of you guys psych yourselves out on tests because you don't have confidence. And so all I'm trying to say is, is that you guys need to have confidence. And if anyone ever tells you that you're too confident, you're too full of yourself, all these types of things, you can never be too full of yourself as long as you're working and giving 100% to become an expert, to become the best you can in your field. And so that's what I wanna to say today, and I hope like, right, that you guys, if you see this video, I hope that you'll share this video with people because there's some people out there who have a false perception of what confidence and cocky is, and we get beat down so much with saying that, oh, humble is the way to go. Humble is not the way to go. If you work for something, if you are something, if you are great and you are amazing, or you wanna be amazing, before you can be that great, you have to have the confidence to know you can be that great. So I hope that you guys see this video, share this video, you know, share my other videos, premedproductivity.com and all that good stuff. Uh, but have a wonderful day, keep paging over here. I'm gonna get back to work um, before I really get fired and all my confidence goes down the drain. So have a great day guys, uh, Dr. Pine said.